Okay, so welcome to the bonus video. So I promised some of you in my last video where we're going through every question on the uh, AccuPlace or Advanced Algebra and Functions test that we're going to nerd out a little bit with math and we're going to take it a little bit more complicated than we normally do so that we can see how we would take this. <laughs> I don't want to say that. I was going to say take this question and put it on steroids, but that's just not uh, that's just a terrible reference. I don't know why I just said that. But anyway, so literally, but it's just, it is kind of true. It's just going to get bigger and stronger and that's what's going to happen. So if you want to just see how we would do something a little bit more challenging than the last one, then stay tuned. So again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to write 5x squared minus 19x is equal to negative 18. Okay, so very similar to this first problem where we have to put this into standard form in order to solve it. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, and it's usually set equal to zero. So what we have to do in this case is we need to bring all the numbers onto this side so that there is an equation in standard form set equal to zero. So we get move the 18 to the other side by adding 18 on both sides. So now we're left with 5x squared minus 19x plus 18 is equal to zero. So now we have to go ahead and factor this. Now, when we're factoring numbers or we're factoring equations that have an A of something that's larger than just one, we have to do a different set of steps. So in this case, we need to multiply five times 18. So five times 18 is 90. And so now we need to find two numbers that multiply to equal 90 that add to equal that middle number, negative 19. So again, you can do a little bit of a guess and check where it's, okay, um, 10 and 9 equal 90 and 10 and 9 equal 19. But because they have to equal negative 19, I'm going to do negative 10 and negative 9, negative 10 and negative 9. Negative 10 and negative 9, they multiply to equal positive 90 and they add to equal negative 19. So what we're going to do here is we are now going to replace this negative 19x with 10x and 9x. So it's going to be 5x squared minus 10x minus 9x plus 18 equals 0. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we factor these two numbers and then we factor these two numbers. So what is the greatest common factor of 5x squared minus 10x? Well, you can take out 5x and you're left with x minus 2. And then what is the greatest common factor between negative 9x plus 18? Well, you can take out a negative 9 and you're left with x minus 2. And now what you do is you combine these two together, 5x minus 9. And then because these are the same, you multiply it by x minus 2. So there you have it. You factored it. We haven't solved it yet, but we factored it. So do you see how I was telling you how this is just a much bigger, a little bit more complicated question? Because this number was larger, we had to do a few extra steps. We had to go ahead and multiply this 5 by the 18, get 90. And then we were able to find what numbers would be replaced in the center. Then we had to factor them out. And we were able to now come up with what two parentheses we're going, what numbers we're going to have in our two parentheses. Now that we have our two parentheses, we can go ahead and solve. Remember, we're solving for what x is equal to, and x is equal to is also called zeros. The reason why they're called zeros is because you solve them by setting the equation equal to zero. So we're going to set 5x minus 9 equals zero, and x minus 2 equals zero. So we're going to go ahead and solve. We're going to add 9 to both sides. 5x is equal to 9. And then we're going to divide both sides by 5 x is going to be equal to 9 fifths. Then we're going to add 2 to both sides, and x is equal to 2. So x is going to be equal to 9 over 5, or x is going to be equal to 2. So the zeros are going to be 9 over 5 and 2. So what does that actually mean? Well, 9 over 5 is just 1 and 4 fifths and 2. So what does this mean in terms of parabolas? Well, when you graph a parabola, and in this case, I think it was a positive parabola. Yes, it is a positive parabola. When you go ahead and see, well, where does this parabola cross over on the x-axis, 
they're gonna cross over at hmm, I should have drawn it up slightly different here let me try again you should have it like this where it crosses over the x-axis at one and four fifths and at two so that's what those zeros actually mean where does this parabola cross over the x-axis which is across here so I hope you guys liked this video. I know that it wasn't exactly um, going off of the practice test, but I was tutoring a student with this and I was having fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bonus one, a little bit of extra ones. Take it a little bit too far. Also with my steroids joke, but hey, that's what we do here. So um, as always, happy studying you guys and I'll see you in the next one.